Hey YouTube, I want to do a short video here on uh, preps I do out of my garden. I have two huge fig trees out in the yard and um, I don't know if you can tell how many that is, but I go out in my garden when the figs are starting to get ripe and every other day I can get about two gallons of figs. And so what do you do with all those figs? Well, the birds get their fair share. And I used to worry about the birds and when the bushes were smaller, I'd drape nets over them. But uh, there's really no need to do that because you're going to get all the figs you want and the birds are going to have plenty too. So don't worry about the birds. Um, they got to eat too. So here are fresh figs I just picked and the main thing you want to do when you um, pick fresh figs is deal with them right away because if I left this till tomorrow all of these would be super ripe and if I left them for two days there would be mold growing on them so figs are that's why you don't see fresh figs in the store is because there's no way to keep them fresh very long so you have to deal with them right away so here's what I do several things I do I slice them in half cut the stems off first here's the stems right here and I'll any scrap garden scrap like that I take it out and feed it to the chickens um, so I lay them out on these dehydrator trays and I put them in the dehydrator and this is the finished product you get over here they dry out very similar to raisins and you can see uh, the thinness right there and how you know when they're done is they just get leathery you don't want to dry them out to where they're crunchy although I guess you could but see that's about the thickness of them when you put them on the trays and I used to slice them thinner but then they stick to the trays and everything so it's best just to slice them in half put them down with the skin side down that way they don't stick um, so I dehydrate a bunch of them I've got fig preserves that I do you know you can check out how to make preserves anywhere and do them the same way just do them with figs and then I also make some figs what I call fig sauce never heard of this or seen this anywhere it's just like what I do with all these figs so I put them in my food processor and I do them the same way. I just take a whole fig, I cut the stem off, give the stems to the chickens, put them in the food processor and just uh, let it go until it turns to a liquid. Then put them on the stove, uh, put sugar in them. I, don't, I use about a third as much sugar as they say to use put lemon juice in them and then can them and you can learn about canning somewhere else but that's the figs uh, several different ways to preserve them uh, I put them in these uh, uh, what do you call these things where you suck all the air now I can't think now that I have to but anyway I put these in some old bags that I saved and you had to be very careful because they didn't vacuum seal. I mean, the, I thought they did, but after a couple of days, the seal didn't hold. So I will just save these out to munch on, to snack on right away. Um, if you leave them out for a couple of days, the seal still looks good, then you can store them away. Something else I do is with onions. Um, you know, I grew a bunch of onions last year and processed them, chop them up, put them on the dehydrator trays, and then I have dried onions, don't have to buy them in the store. And I'll vacuum seal some of them, too, for long-term storage. Make sure they're dried out good, vacuum seal them. Again, just make sure that the seal is good before you store them away, long-term storage. Um, do the same thing with peppers. Here's some... Um, like pepper flakes. These are hot lemon peppers and you oh, you say well those aren't yellow like lemons but you can pick them when they're green too so most of this jar was green but they are hot hot 
and you use them to season all your food. Well, food that you want is hot. Let me get this jar open. This is what a uh, whole dried out hot lemon pepper looks like. And you can take that and break it up and put it in stew. And there goes the phone, but I'm not going to answer because I know it ain't for me. So, and then you're probably wondering what this is. That is squash out of my garden this year, 2012. And I dehydrated some of that too. And I made a meatloaf a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, a lot of meatloaf recipes call for oatmeal to kind of help it stiffen up and stick together. Well, I put some of this in there instead of the oatmeal, and it came out just fine. Um, my son hates squash. Just don't tell him it's in there. He'll eat it. Another thing I do, everything I plant is uh, heirloom varieties. That means you can save the seeds and replant them the next year. So, here's some corn. This is Silver Queen corn. And this is a uh, ear that I saved. And I go out and I just leave some on the stalks until the ears look like this. Then I pick them and bring them inside and I have what I call a micro uh, farm. I have an acre and a half with you know my house and some land and I have some chickens and I have some rabbits and it's incredible the amount of food you can grow on uh, just a little bit of land. So this, I will save this seed uh, to plant next year. You can see how they're loosening up in there and they're still not, you don't want to pick these off until they're like really hard all the way. And then you can just run your thumb down through there and they'll just break off, seal them up in a jar Put them in the refrigerator or somewhere really cool in your basement and those are your seeds to plant for next year. And this is another kind of corn. It's a, uh, I think it's Golden Bantam, which is also an heirloom variety, so I can replant these every year and I do. And I've got, shoot, a couple of mason jars full of these seeds already downstairs. But you know, I save some every year just in case. Uh, it's July, almost August. I'm still getting a little bit of squash. There's a squash. Uh, bell peppers. You, you can dry anything on your food dehydrator and save it, and it'll store. Now, I also chop some of these up, put them in food saver bags, and put them in the freezer fresh. I mean, they're not dehydrated, but I keep some out dehydrated too. You put that in meatloaf, and you don't have to use the oatmeal and stuff. This is this will bind it also because that will rehydrate while it's cooking and make it to where the oatmeal doesn't just fall apart. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to show you what's going on in the garden this time of year. Uh, I think I've shown you everything so far. It's just, uh, I live north of Atlanta in Georgia, and you can garden year-round here. That's what I love about the area where I'm in. So I'll be planting fall crops here in, a, in the next week, and we'll have lettuce and all kind of stuff like that growing, and it'll grow right through the winter. I'll go ahead and plant onions and garlic and I this is the way I process everything some fresh I'll dehydrate some um, I, I put some just chop it up fresh put it in the freezer but you know if your power ever goes off you want to have stuff dried you want to have it in where it's relatively long food storage like this these are onions again and so that's it, y'all. Have a good day, and I'll come back to you later. Thanks.